Hi, this is Gretchen from the NOLA Time Bank, and I'm going to talk today about how to do the basics of setting up your profile in Community Weaver 3. So here I'm using the demo site, so this is not all real information, but to show you how it works, I've got the demo site open. I'm logged into my member account. I can see my name right here is Gretchen. I'm going to click on my name, and this will take me to my profile. Now there's actually three, the three most important things I'm going to show you right here that we want to have on any profile as you begin your Time Bank membership, and those three things are correct contact information, including a neighborhood. It's a picture of you and a, a bit about you in the bio. Those three things are what I'm going to talk about today and they're really important. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my picture. You can see I just clicked on the arrow. It takes me into my computer where I actually happen to know that I have in my pictures file. I do have some pictures of myself that I can pick out. Um, also, if you're doing this on your phone, you click that arrow and it goes to your photo roll from your phone. And it's really easy to just take a selfie and uh, put that on your account using your phone or using a, a regular computer. So there I am. The next thing that I said was really important is the contact info, which includes your neighborhood. Now, since the, so many of the projects that we do are neighbor to neighbor, pet sitting, a ride, you're really, people are going to first look for people in their neighborhood to exchange with. And if you don't have your neighborhood flagged on your profile, you're going to miss out. So here in the neighborhood drop down, I'm going to say, yes, I live in the Riverside neighborhood. I'm also going to double check that my time zone, actually, I have time zone in Chicago. Uh, oh, let's say my time zone. You know, you want your time zone to be correct. You want your neighborhood. You want your street address. All this information needs to be complete. Now, that doesn't mean that other people in the time bank are going to be able to see it because you have your privacy settings. So you want your regular email and your phone numbers, and you can decide, do I want this information to only be uh, visible to the coordinators and the leadership of my time bank, or do I want it visible to everyone? You know, personally, we use the phone a lot here in New Orleans, so I want my phone number visible to everyone. But that's really up to you. Pick the one that you want and save those changes. Now, I've got a picture of myself. I have correct and updated contact information with the neighborhood. The last thing that's going to really make it easy for people to uh, approach me and talk in exchange is having filled out a bit of a bio. So I've written the things I like to do. Um, maybe I'm going to write some of the uh, services that I'm looking for, that I need help, a bit of my background, do I have professional training, um, I've taken care of my mom with Alzheimer's, so that's something that I might share with people in case they're going through the same thing. But really, take some time and write a paragraph or two here in the bio section so people get a sense of who you are and at that next potluck, they're going to feel really comfortable coming up to you and saying, hey, you're going, you know, you do some stuff that I like, let's do a time bank exchange. So I'm going to wrap it up for now. This is just a basic for the members, the three most important things that need to be on your profile, uh, a picture good contact info, a neighborhood, and your bio. There's other stuff, but we'll cover it in the next tutorial. Thanks so much.